You know, sometimes couples in long-term relationships will tell me that they didn't used to communicate all that well about sex. And they can remember often pretty vividly uh, arguments that they had, places where the communication really broke down. That's, of course, a sad thing. It's an unfortunate thing. But one of the things we know about couples that maintain over a long period of time is they typically get to be better and better communicators. Indeed, the poorest communicators, often their relationships fail and they're not together anymore. So sometimes when there's been an issue that's been discussed maybe in the past where, say, one partner has said, I would like to try something, some particular thing sexually, and that was met with real resistance on the part of the other partner. Maybe he or she said, no way, don't even talk to me about that, and so forth. And yet, the partner who is interested in exploring that activity, that interest may not have waned over time, and it still might be on her mind or his mind. And so the question becomes, gee, just because it didn't go very well before, does that mean kind of for a lifetime, I better not bring that up again? And I say to those couples, I don't think there's anything that should be prohibited for a lifetime along those lines, especially anything related to communication. So my suggestion to them is always to, if you want to bring something up again, first you need to do it at a time and in a way that you're likely to have success. So you want to have that discussion when you're already relaxed, you're not distracted, you're not needing to run out the door to do something else, you're not going to be interrupted. So catch people at their best, not only your partner, but yourself as well. And then you need to ask permission about whether or not your partner is willing to talk with you about some specific sexual thing. And that may sound silly. Why do I have to ask my husband or my wife, for example, to have a conversation? And yet I think that's perfectly reasonable. We don't always feel like talking about this subject or that at a particular time. So once you have permission, then, then you can really go ahead and have the discussion. So it might sound something like this. Gee, hon, there's something that's been on my mind that I'd like to talk with you about having to do with our sex life. And I would like to have that discussion with you. It could be now or it could be some other time. How does that sound to you? And if you get the response from the partner that, yeah, this would be a good time, or if it's a later time, once he or she tells you that it's a good time, then you have the discussion. And you might say something about, you know, I really love you. I really appreciate you, and one of the things I appreciate about our relationship is our wonderful sex life. I also love that we can communicate better than we used to back in the old days when we were raising the kids or when we were distracted by careers in ways that we aren't now, for example. And then you might begin to talk about the issue. And you might say, you know, a long time ago I talked with you about, and then whatever the, whatever the request might be. And I don't know if you remember this, but I remember that it didn't go well at all. And I think that was back at a time when lots of our discussions didn't go very well. And I'm wondering if that's a discussion that we could have now. It's not the biggest deal in the world. If you tell me that that's something you clearly don't want to do, that's okay with me. But I don't want to just wonder based on something that happened years and maybe even many years ago so that we ended up cutting each other off from an opportunity to talk about something because we were different people then than we are today. Perhaps we could talk about it as the people we are today and see where that discussion goes.